welcome and a happy new year to you. I wish you success in all your endeavors in the new year. Do what you can but don't expect ultimate satisfaction through what you do. Or what you achieve through the doing. It can give you temporary satisfaction, a feeling of increased aliveness, a stronger sense of identity, of being somebody, a feeling of expansion, on the outer level. A certain satisfaction which comes with having overcome obstacles, generated inner resources that perhaps you didn't know you had until you were faced with these obstacles. That's all good. But the sense of satisfaction is not a lasting one. As long as you know that, it's fine. Uh, because satisfaction ultimately true satisfaction is not arrived at through doing or whatever you achieve through the doing. This satisfaction, which we could also call happiness, joyous aliveness, whatever, comes from being rather than doing. So if you do and do and do, but forget to be, then you encounter frustrations one after the other. But what do I mean when I say forget to be? How can you forget to be? The forgetfulness of being is to overlook continuously a dimension 
in you that's always there, but in the case of most people, never realized. So, our meditation here, of course, is all about being, going into that dimension within. That is formless and timeless, that dimension of consciousness. where you really step back from thinking, because all thinking is also a kind of doing, where you step back from thinking, another way of putting it, rise above thinking, and realize beyond all the doing and the successes and failures and conditions and situations of your life and beyond your usual sense of self based on your past. There is something else in you and it is that which is continuously overlooked. And it's very hard to put it into words, because every word is a thought that has become a sound. So it's never it. You can only know what I'm talking about by realizing that dimension in yourself, which is by the way, the most important thing in your life, to realize that. You can only realize it for yourself in the present moment. The, to know that you are I am consciously to know the beingness that you are. And by know, I don't mean intellectual or conceptual knowing, but a direct realization. You don't know the apple by talking about it or describing it or even painting it. You can only know the apple by biting into it. So in that sense, you can only know that in the present moment, the realization of beingness, becoming aware, aware, aware of your very being, make it conscious, it was always there, is always there, but had been overlooked in all the doing, which includes thinking. Becoming aware of your essential beingness you cannot understand what that means conceptually, but only directly. 
So if you understand what I'm talking about, then you're there. I'm here to take you there. So let's step back from thinking. Don't need it right now. And when you don't remember through thinking who you are on that level of mind, what is it that remains? Let's say at this moment, if you're not thinking, there's a a space opens up within you and you don't remember your past because all your past consists of is thoughts. And when you're thinking, you don't remember your problems because really also problems are thoughts. So what is left when that space opens up? There is something left, but what you cannot really call it anything because it, it seems to be a nothingness from the point of view of the thinking mind. But what is beyond doubt is what's left and that is beyond doubt is that you are. There is a presence there and you are that presence. And that presence has no form. And that's the, the most amazing realization is that beyond the person that you are, more fundamentally, you are that underlying presence. And in that presence, you are nobody in particular. You are not something that is defined And that is the source of true satisfaction, to know yourself as that which is beyond form. And to some people that comes not through a spiritual teaching, it can come when the, the forms of their lives are destroyed. Life does that. Periodically, it creates and destroys forms. When there's loss in your life, and sometimes what's left when you lose everything is that sense of beingness, of just a conscious presence. And then suddenly in amazement, you as the conscious presence, not as a person, are looking at the world. And you are amazed how lovely it is when you don't look at the world through the eyes of the person, which is thought and past. And that is the remembrance of being. There was a spiritual teacher in early, the early 20th century, Gurdjieff, who called it self-remembering. And he would sometimes interrupt his students when they were doing things, talking amongst each other or engaged in this or that kind of doing, and he would suddenly shout, stop! And everybody had to freeze. And in that moment, 
they, the stop signal was meant for them to remind them of the possibility of remembering that deeper level of who they are, where thought subsides and all that's left is the presence that you are. It's not a question of living either in that connectedness with being or in the doing that is normal existence in this world. It's not either or. But both fuse, merge together. So that even while you do things, and even while you think, there's still an underlying awareness of presence, of that spaciousness within. And it is that which brings about the possibility of, yes, doing, if necessary, with an intensity of energy, but at the same time, with a detachment. So you do, but you are not in the grip of the doing. You think, but you're not in the grip of thinking. You may have emotions, but you are not possessed by them. There is an awareness of that inner spaciousness beyond the awareness of your presence or presence, we could call it. It's not yours, it's just how we use language. There's a presence there and you are that presence. And that presence is essentially what is traditionally called divine presence. It is the light of the world. It is the light of consciousness. It is perhaps not Perhaps it is not absolutely right to say this is God, but it is the light of God, because God is absolutely ineffable. It, God is beyond anything that we could say, talk about. So that presence is very much like the light of the sun. That's why we sometimes use that expression. In some sense, the light of the sun is the sun. The light of the sun is still connected to the sun. It's an emanation of the sun. But it's not the sun that incredible, seemingly inexhaustible, energy that gives of itself for billions of years, for millions of billions. So that's, we can compare that, of course, God is infinitely more than the sun, but in our sense perceived universe, the, the, the closest we can 
the analogy we can find for God is to call it the sun. That's why in some traditional societies there has there was sun worshiping. Of course, there's, there's far more to the sun also than we know, but that's another story. So there's the sun and there's the light of the sun, and so the presence is the light of the one, the God. And you are that. <laughs> 